नमस्कार दिलीप सिंह एडवोकेट रिसेंटली वर्ल्ड बैंक हैज गिवन अ रिपोर्ट दैट इफ इंडिया मेक्स इट्स लेबर लॉज लेस रिस्ट्रिक्टिव इट कुड अप्रॉक्सीमेटली एड 2.8 मिलियन मोर गुड क्वालिटी फॉर्मल जॉब्स टू इट्स मार्केट एनुअली दिस कुड बी वन ऑफ द मोटिवेटिंग फैक्टर्स फॉर द गवर्नमेंट टू मूव फॉर द स्वीपिंग चेंज इन द लेबर लॉज but there are other factors also we need to discuss let me add you that the first factory act was passed in the year 1881 and the workers of the bombay textile industry demanded that the working hours should be reduced weekly holidays should be declared and the compensation in case of injuries suffered by the workmen should be given mr l lokhande was the first person in 1890 who established a labor's union with the name bombay mills association it was the first union since 1890 industry and the labor welfare have changed significantly but the act of balancing of the two conflicting interests are is still the same and the government is trying to do that labor laws have been extensively changed and now there are four codes of labor laws wage code was passed in 2019 and the rest three codes passed in september 2020 these changes have got okay and brick bags equally industries have praised this changes for being much needed reform and rationalizing of the labor laws whereas the trade union have unions have criticized it being exploitative and anti labor let me share the interesting uh, information about this and uh, we will compare is compare the various uh, aspects of the 20 2020 and the respective laws which were in the 20 2019 these four these three codes which have been passed recently are the industrial relations code to 2020 the social security code 2020 the occupational safety health and working conditions code 2020 and these all are the updated version of the bills which were produced which were uh, uh, produced in the lok sabha and rajya sabha in 220 2019 welcome to my channel legal outlook by dilip singh today we are discussing the far reaching consequences and implications of the three bills three labor new labor codes passed by parliament parliament i did not get the sufficient discussion because it did not get the sufficient discussion in the parliament as the opposition was absent while it was passed so it needs to see the these three codes very very minutely and as a student of law so that we can understand in the better perspective in the lighter vein the way it is passed in the parliament what can it be said it was passed by the procedure established by law or the due process of law was followed by the parliament anyway if one bad thing if one bad thing i am asked about these all three codes and i have to point out then i would say hire and fire policy as well as restrictions on strike from my side these are the negative and bad things and what is the one good thing if i am asked to say then the one good thing i'd say that the expansion of social security net for both formal and informal workers and but it has much to offer we will see in detail in this video and the other two videos which in consideration which in series are made let us consider its important points we say this 2019 week before we proceed let me ask a question from myself why central government chose to legislate on such a big scale on the labor laws or why such a sweeping change the central government says there are 100 state acts and almost 40 central acts regulating various aspects of the labor employment condition in india and it needed to be simplified and make it more conducive in the present scenario and clear the cobweb of archaic and old laws let me tell you the second national commission on labor 
studied the various laws very extensively and found that the existing legislations or labor laws very complex and old and not suited suited for the present industrial condition so it so it suggested and recommended to ease the compliance and ensure the informality of labor law the commission of 2002 recommended to consolidate the entire central laws into broader groups such as industrial relation group wages social security and safety and welfare conditions and these are the four classifications which the present government has followed and completely all consolidated all the laws into four codes then the question comes what necessitated for this fresh legislation in the present scenario as i told you about the uh, about the um, uh, expectation and about the estimates of the uh, in, in this that 4.2.8 uh, new jobs can be created so it needed to improve the perception of labor market of india among investors from outside secondly government needed needs to create job oriented market so this sweeping changes were required then why state opposes the central legislation labor falls in the labor laws and labor this area falls in the concurrent list of seventh schedule that is list 3 therefore both parliament and the state legislature can pass laws on it the state takes it an encroachment in the area which are specified for which should have been left for the state laws and you know every state laws state has its own uh, strength and weaknesses and they need to respond to those and they need separate treatment for their labor problems then why does it why does the uh, trade union criticize it and what trade union stands for in this labor laws because the entire concept of trade union has been changed in the new laws where where there is one there is more than one uh, union in an establishment the sole negotiating union status will be given to one which has 51% of the employees as its member so there will not there will not be many unions existing in one establishment only one will be given that status and in 2019 bill it the, this was 75% requirement and 2000 in 2020 bill it has been reduced from 75% to 50% so where uh, where no uh, in situation where no union qualifies under this criteria the employer must constitute a negotiating council this is the new concept negotiating council consisting of representatives drawn from the various unions and with only those with at least 20% of employees as its member so this concept of negotiating council is new and uh, so this will uh, create a problem for the negotiating union because this will give a length and length and breadth and a new uh, a scope for the industry management to 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 get the benefit of the conflict of the various unions then what was the background on which this bill was introduced in monsoon session in fact the government of india consolidated 29 central labor laws in four consolidated codes labor ministry introduced four codes related to wages industrial relations social security and occupational safety and health and working conditions these four categories were made and in 2019 the these all were introduced but only code on wages were was passed by the parliament and the rest three bills three codes were sent to the standing committee the standing committee submitted its report on the three bills the government has replaced these bills with the new ones as, uh, on september 19 2020 we need to understand that the earlier to some 2019 bill there is there there are some significant departure from what was in 2019 bill and what has been given in the 2020 bill so we say this 220 2019 and 2020 we need to understand the first point what is the difference in 2019 bills and the new 20 2020 bills 
on the point of public sector undertakings. In 2019, bills provided that the central government will act as the appropriate government for any central public sector undertaking. This was in, 20, in 2019. What happened in 2020? It adds that the central government will continue to be the, the central uh, to uh, appropriate government for a central PSU when if the holding of the central government is less than 50 percent less than 50 percent so in the in the, this phase of disinvestment the government is um, going for it is of future consequences and seeing the future the government has introduced this concept that even where the share of the central government is reduced by 50 percent even there the appropriate government will be the central government meaning thereby share where even in cases where the central government is in a minority shareholder the step this step is probably taken in the light of the business investment plan of the government which has its uh, which has with the government is for the future what i think that this may be good for controlling the anger of trade union presently but it may dampen the effort of disinvestment by inserting this thing. What is the difference in 2019 bill and the 2020 bill on the point of specified industries? Because this is the new concept was introduced, the specified industries. In 2019 bill, the appropriate government for certain specified industries such as railways, mines, telecom and banking was the central government. But in 2020 bills, the ads that the central government will be the appropriate government for any controlled industry. This again a new concept, controlled industry, which has been defined in the as the Indian industry which which the control of the Indian government has been declared by any central act in public interest. Means if central government declares any industry in public interest as the controlled industry, then there the appropriate government will be the central government. As an advocate, I can say that it is an all-inclusive definition of the controlled, uh, uh, controlled industry. Government can aid any other industry at the sweet will of the political master at any point of time in the future. So this is has broadened the scope of interference of central government in the any industry. This means another centralization effort by the central government and leaving less for the state government. Then what is the difference in 2019 bills and the new 2020 bills on the point of offensive and compounding? Because there are certain offenses, uh, certain acts of uh, industry has been made offenses and punishable offenses and uh, there are provision for compounding of those offenses. In 2019 bill allowed the compounding means set what is the compounding let me first tell you the compounding is the settling of the offenses with uh, with the consent of the victim in 2019 bill allowed the compounding of offenses which were not punishable with imprisonment for with a uh, with a um, imprisonment or with imprisonment or with what subject to certain conditions compounding was allowed with the 50 percent of the maximum fine fine provided for the offense with the consent of the victim. In 2020 bill, they, they, they have categorized in two they have categorized in two forms. First, where only fine is there, then 50% of the maximum fine amount. If it is punishment in the terms of imprisonment is also there, then 75% of the maximum fine amount. So this has been categorized. Then the another important point which comes to my mind is what is the provision of exemption in the code of industrial relation industrial relation 2020 there is a specific provision has been inserted for exemption the appropriate government may exempt any new industrial establishment or class of establishment from the provisions of the code in public interest so another another area which is left for for uh, the uh, interference you can say or um, it, it will be open for central government to enter and uh, uh, to explore the possibility of bringing uh, fresh investment in certain areas where it is fine that the exemption can be given and in the interest of the fresh investment. What is its implication by 
giving the exemption it simply means giving benefit to a company at the cost of labor welfare this gives central government a power to give any industry new industry complete go by with the restrictions imposed by the industrial dispute act or industrial Dis uh, industrial relation code then what will be the provisions for standing orders in 2020 what what are the provisions please understand it is very important because the standing orders are specifically made for the industry bigger industry so that the in this industry could state in advance matters related to classification of uh, workers manners in forming uh, workers and about the work hours holidays pay days and wages and termination of employment so in 2020 bills it provides that all industrial establishment with 300 workers or more have to prepare the standing the standing orders and uh, particularly in related to the matters uh, uh, which are stated here in i stated you about the classification of workers and the wages and termination of employment grievances redressal uh, for workers so these are the in these are the area these are the area which uh, we need uh, standing orders need to be classified and clarified for the workers so in this case what we see very specific and very significant is that there is a sudden jump from 100 workers to 300 workers because earlier it was 100 workers uh, on more were required to uh, provide the standing orders now it has been reduced it has been enhanced that up to 300 workers there is no requirement for giving any standing orders regarding the job conditions and job environment what about the establishment of uh, less than 300 workers then in earlier uh, in 2019 bill the central government had taken the responsibility to make the provisions related to standing orders applicable to the establishment with less than 100 workers through a notification but in 20, 2020 bill it has been specifically removed means central government is signing away from its responsibility of taking care of those workers who are working in the industries where the uh, where the number of workers are less than 300 so government has allowed the companies up to 300 workers to fire workers or such plants without the prior approval of the government so they can set out the plant they said they can set out the plant without the approval of the central government firms with more than 300 workers need to apply for the approval before they before retrenchment or set, setting down of the plant however if the authorities here also this is a very important point that whenever the authorities do not respond in the specific time for the retrenchment proposal it will be taken as deemed to be approved so a deeming provision has been introduced by the government in favor of the industry and against the interest of the labor so labor are at the mercy of the establishment what about the situation when the number of employees in an establishment come down from 300 to less than 300 so very interestingly in 20 2019 bill it provided that once an establishment is covered with the scheme which uh, for 300 and 300 plus workers then even if the amount, if the number of uh, employees is reduced from uh, 300 to less than 300 they will be continue to work on the same way but unfortunately in the 2020 bills remove this requirement means the industry will be uh, will follow its own whims and fancy and whenever they feel that the reducing the employee by 300 they can get certain benefits they will on paper they will reduce it so this is something wrong the deeming provision should not have been there and the central government should owe the responsibility of taking care of the situations where the employment number of workers have been reduced by by uh, from the 300 there is a, this this has given the scope of manipulation by the establishment of course there is a material departure from 2019 bill but it is an attempt by the government to seize the opportunities which the government is seeing due to the outbreak of uh, corona and anti chinese sentiment created in the world at large so government is thinking to attract those investors so that india can be 
can provide an alternate to China by so this sweeping changes have been introduced in the labor laws. We will continue this journey and this entire changes are very big and it contains many provisions to discuss. So I will make two more videos on it. Here this journey I, I stop here and uh, this journey and uh, we will discuss the later part. Kindly subscribe my channel, subscribe to my channel, share my video with your friends, like it, subscribe it. Thank you very much.